So I was meditating the other day, and I was thinking about Neville's work. And I thought about William Blake, and he mentions in a poem how to always see in double vision. And to always see in double vision would be to see things as symbolic messages or the representations of something mental or something about us. And not seeing it through just the senses, and that would be single vision. So he said to always keep double vision. And when I opened my eyes, I saw that there was an object in front of me. And I had a lamp on in the corner, and because I had that lamp on, it cast, uh, cast a, a shadow from this object. And I really tried to see this through more of a mental lens, and I thought what I could learn from something so simple. Something obvious to me, which is a shadow I, and a lamp and a light source, I wanted to at least understand it from a perspective through Neville. And what I saw was that however I moved this object, or if I moved the lamp, the shadow would change. It would cast something different. And so the shadow is directly related with the relationship this object has with the light. And, well, I thought about that from Neville's work when he says that this outer man is simply a shadow of the inner man, who is the light. And I tried to understand it through this, you can say, a physical message. And what I saw was that the light, the lamp, represents my imagination. And where I am at inside of my imagination, what relationship I have with it, I cast a shadow upon this world. And so if I change myself in relationship to this imagination or this light source, which I discovered was within me uh, in the dream that I had with Neville, that that ball of light was in me, where I decide to be in relationship to that light, I cast a shadow upon this world. And so I really tried to see from their perspective that this world is a shadow. It's an effect from that light. And so I could, in theory, pick up the object and move it two inches to the right or to the left, and it would cast a different shadow. But these are it would, it, that's a very minor change in the reality. Um, if I want a larger change, then I would have to see what I am in reality. And I find myself in reality. And so if I want to change something in reality that's important to me, it would be myself. I'd have a bigger impact than just simply having small degrees of manipulation. And I don't like the word manipulation, but let's just say small degrees of movement in reality. If I want a larger movement in reality, then I must change something that's larger than simply moving an object two inches to the right. And so I see that the larger thing to change would be myself. And the way I change myself is I go inside of myself and I see myself in a new state of mind as if it's like a piece of clothing, as if I mentally put on new clothes, a new mental state of consciousness. I decide to occupy it. I decide to have it. I don't wonder anymore if I'm moral enough or if I'm deserving enough because I, we are told that it doesn't judge on the shadow. So whatever you've done in the shadow world it doesn't really matter. What matters is where you occupy mentally because all outer activity first starts and it first has imaginal activity before it. Now, I know this from my own experience. I've had arguments inside my head. And a week, two weeks later, the argument happens exactly as I worded it. I might have forgot what I've said, but if I remember, if I try to recall it, I will, if I see my harvest and think about when did I think this, I can find it. I can find something very similar. And so I start to see that reality is far more mental than I give it credit for. And something you can do every day is promise yourself in the morning when you wake up that whatever desire arises within you, that you will fulfill it within you by believing you have that. And just go with you, just live your day normally, but change what you're doing internally. People always ask me, well, what do I do after I've imagined? Don't do anything. Just imagine it. Imagine that you have the thing you desire. Change your position inside of yourself. Be more interested. Be more concerned if you worry a lot. Worry more about where you're at internally, although I wouldn't recommend you not worry. I would recommend you changing. Change your where you're at in relation to that light or in, to, uh, in relation to consciousness. And 
think of it, if you really have a hard time taking ownership of it, think of it this way, that when you go to assume a new state within you, think of it as consciousness itself is clothing you with new mental clothes or a new mental state of, of mind. It's clothing you. It's giving it to you. It's like a new outfit, mental, a new mental outfit. That's what I would call it. You have to put on a new mental outfit. And I understand that there's many obstacles that can come in the way between you and the acceptance of this new mental outfit. You might wonder what others might think. You might wonder what you might think of yourself. You might wonder if you're worthy or not or whatever it may be or enough in this area, that area. You might judge yourself. But I would recommend instead of you judging yourself, you actually move and change. It says to repent. And repentance is a radical change of mind. It doesn't say first fix all the things that are wrong or remove your guilt or do this and then, or, you know, right your wrongs and then imagine. No, it says change, move, find a movement within you and sustain the movement. Live somewhere else, move as you would in this world. Many of us move into a new state, a literal state here, and we tend to not do that internally. But become more interested in what you're doing internally. You have a larger movement in this outer reality for it's just a shadow. And then the what you'll find is that when you find movement to be more important than your judgment of yourself, then the umbilical cords of the past will be cut and the ligaments of the previous states will be ripped and you'll be set free from your own bondage. And before you change, maybe you're about to change, but you feel a bit afraid that what if it doesn't happen? Always remember this, whenever I have fallen into that mindset where I wondered, I was kind of afraid if it wouldn't happen. I wondered, well, where else would I go to? To fulfill this desire, who else can I go to? I would wonder what God I could worship. There was this lecture that Neville gave where he said that many Catholics believed in the saints, and yet the church decided to claim certain saints as non-existent. And so you had thousands and thousands of people, millions of people, praying to saints that never existed. And so they were testing something outside of themselves. And that's not what the point is. The point is to test what is within us. That is what we test. We test the power in us. And when we test it and we see that it works, we can't go to another power. So we make the power one. We make everything one in a sense. Because the moment you go to one false god, you'll find another and another. Next thing you know, you're worshipping rocks and you're worshipping deities that don't exist, that don't speak back to you. You're worshipping things that will never show you that you already are the thing you want to be. As Neville says, but it's your refusal to believe it is the reason you don't see it. And so we start to live upon our mental eyes and we start to fulfill our mental eyes we start to fulfill our mental mouths by speaking the words we want we start to fulfill our mental ears by hearing the things we desire we no longer live in sin inside of ourselves that's the good news and it is good news but to have it explained clearly can be difficult and I am trying my best to try to manipulate and maneuver the English tongue to make it make sense to myself as well. But I hope I'm making sense that really you have this ability to move inside of yourself. You don't have to tell anybody. Nobody has to know where you desire to occupy. Let the world go. Let it be the way exactly as it is, as Neville has said. And find the mental breath of relief, as I've said inside. Find that mental place. Find the promised land. What is your desired land that you wish to live in, that you wish to have ownership of? Who else, if not you, will have ownership of it inside of you? Who else? There's no one else in you to occupy that state. You're the only one who can. And once you live upon your mental eyes, you'll start seeing with your mental eyes. You'll see that they're more important, your mental eyes, than your physical ones. And then you'll no longer live reacting to life reacting to your environment, because if you re only react to your environment, you can never surpass your environment. Because as Neville has said, that if you judge by the appearances of things, you'll forever be enslaved by them. 
It's another way of saying that if you keep reacting to your environment, you can't surpass it. You have to think above your environment. You have to think above your current self, your current self. You have to rise above where you think you are right now. And it may be difficult. You may struggle to believe it, but you're being shown it within you. You're hearing it within you. Learn to believe in that being, and you'll see it's your very self that you're believing in. And then you'll start to live upon a new authority, a new Lord, a new God to worship, but not one seen by mortal eyes, not one created by wood and hands, but one that is in you, that's your very self.